In this video, I will uh, talk about chronic pancreatitis. Uh, there's an acute form, of course, uh, but um, in this video, we'll talk about the chronic form. So here we go. Uh, chronic pancreatitis, as uh, in, implied by the name uh, pancreatitis, is uh, an inflammation of the pancreas. And um, it eventually can lead to a lot of problems uh, down the road and we're going to talk about those and um, actually right before I get into the etiology I would like to kind of give you a preview of the three things that it causes which are sort of the famous triad and that famous triad is uh, steatorrhea okay diabetes and uh, calcifications a lot of the vignettes that you see on licensing exams will will have these three things, and um, that that kind of is a very very big trigger uh, that the answer is pancreatitis. So um, let's get into the etiology. By far the most common reason someone will become uh, chronic pancreatic uh, inflammatory person is alcoholism, without a doubt. But there's other reasons uh, as well. There's hereditary. And a person can also become a, um, a patient with pancreatitis on a chronic basis if they have obstruction, uh, in particular of the pancreatic duct. And I'll, I'll show you a beautiful diagram a little later on that pretty much explains this whole uh, anatomy. What are the symptoms? Well, the symptoms are also classic on licensing exams. You have that abdominal pain that radiates to back to the back. But that's uh, really more of an acute uh, presentation. The chronic presentation is more of a severe epigastric pain that uh, sometimes can be episodic. And also you have to remember that the real keys to chronic is what, I, what, the, what is actually happening because this is going on for so long that the person starts to develop malabsorption. They just simply can't absorb the, uh, the things that they eat because the enzymes that the pancreas normally releases are not being released anymore. So this malabsorption leads to steatorrhea and this is the big one. Now we all know what diarrhea is. What's what's steatorrhea? Well steatorrhea is basically when the person uh, essentially loses uh, fat in their stool. And there's another more uh, obscure uh, form uh, of uh, malabsorption is called creatorrhea. Creatorrhea, what's that? Well that's when the person has undigested muscle fibers in the stool. These are really a direct consequence of a patient having a malabsorption. And then eventually, the person shows signs of glucose intolerance and uh, can develop diabetes because the pancreas, as you, most of you know, is involved in uh, production of insulin. All right, so then we talk a little bit about the symptoms. Now, now, what is the diagnosis? It's actually a difficult diagnosis because when somebody presents with these types of symptoms, most doctors will not immediately jump to the test that actually uh, diagnoses it, which is the CT of the abdomen. Uh, this is CT of the abdomen is usually done later on. Eventually, uh, eventually, after you're not able to find a diagnosis, initially, uh, these are the tests that are done. These are the enzymes that are produced by the pancreas. But the problem with these two tests is that, see, think about it. In an acute pancreatitis, these two enzymes will be very high. So that's easy. But in chronic pancreatitis, these two enzymes will be very high, okay? But in chronic pancreatitis, the pancreas is dying. So what happens is these enzymes can maybe be normal, uh, which is, makes the diagnosis very difficult. The, the, the pancreatic function is lost, essentially. Uh, so you, you don't get this presentation anymore. So what you really need to do is a CT of the abdomen, and on the CT of the abdomen, you'll see that the pancreas is atrophied. That's what triggers the diagnosis. Uh, another thing you can probably see on the CT or even an X-ray are those calcifications that I talked about. Pancreatic calcification is a very uh, strong sign of chronic pancreatitis. And another test you can do, which usually a lot of doctors don't even do, is you test the stool for fat to see uh, uh, if the person indeed has steatorrhea. One other test I'd like to mention is uh, chronic pancreatitis uh, 
um, is associated sometimes with pancreatic cancer. And pancreatic cancer has a serum uh, uh, tumor marker. And, you know, there's tumor markers for every cancer. What is it for pancreatic cancer? Do you all remember? CA, CA what? 19 slash 9. That's, that's an important one. That's on licensing exams all the time. Um, CA125 is ovarian cancer. Just as an aside, I just wanted to mention that. They always test these. It's important to remember. Okay, now let's get into the treatment. How do you treat this? Well, I'd like to break up the treatment into acute and chronic because the, the licensing exams will talk a lot about acute. And the acute stuff uh, is really the three things. You give them IV fluids, an acute bout of pancreatitis, you NPO status, which basically means you don't feed them anything, and then you give them pain, pain medicine and analgesia. A very, very standard triad of treatment for acute pancreatitis. But how do you treat chronic pancreatitis? I mean, what's the... How do you do that? How do you... How do you treat... Well, the, the treatment of chronic pancreatitis involves enzyme replacement. Remember, the pancreas normally uh, secretes enzymes, and those enzymes aid in digestion. Aid in digestion. Now, the pancreas is now essentially died and no longer secreting these enzymes so you need to give these enzymes to the person in the, in the form essentially of replacement so those enzymes are amylase lipase okay and there's another one called protease and here in North America there's a wonder wonder drug it's called Creon and I encourage you to read a little bit about this what is Creon well it's these enzymes all in one convenient capsule and they take it many times, I think they take it uh, two, three times a day and uh, essentially replaces their pancreatic enzymes. And uh, also part of the treatment, oh, running out of space here, but I can squeeze it in here, is you give uh, a medication that reduces the acid in the stomach. So either an H2 blocker, and these are very, very common, or a, a proton pump inhibitor, such as omeprazole. And the final thing I wanted to mention before I show you that diagram is something called pancreatic pseudocyst. Uh, this is by far the most common complication, and this is usually treated by it being drained endoscopically. Okay. Now I'd like to show you a nice uh, diagram, very, very nice diagram. Well, let me erase all the text here. Okay, this is a beautiful diagram. Let's see if I can... Here we go of the biliary tree. It's very, very, very nice. Uh, this explains everything that in terms of anatomy. Here's your beautiful pancreas. This is the pancreatic duct, okay? And this is where uh, if a person develops uh, stenosis or stones, a um, person can develop, uh, I'm drawing little stones here. So this whole thing is the, uh, maybe use a more conspicuous color. Uh, it doesn't really matter what color we use, but uh, I hope you understand, like, these are the stones. If they develop here in this pancreatic duct, they, a person can develop chronic pancreatitis. Um, this is the gallbladder, and uh, these are, this is the cystic duct. Uh, this is the uh, hepatic duct, and then those two ducts uh, join, as you can see, to form the common bile duct. And the common bile duct is where the stones can sometimes travel down and eventually end up in this pancreatic duct which is in close proximity um, so this is a nice draw diagram if you uh, are confused about uh, the anatomy uh, you can refer to this diagram or any similar diagram of the gallbladder and pancreas and the uh, small intestine because this is of course the duodenum well that was a short presentation about chronic pancreatitis